so just a recap we talked about session for anonymous user and logged in user uh, the guest and the login user uh, api routes uh, uh, i'll check uh, the auth checks which we discussed before we leaving the uh, taking out the break that is how we doing the key cock protect to certain routes right <coughs> now we'll see uh, uh, whitelist and role checks okay so which is uh, uh, you know most commonly encountered problem uh, in when it, the application is uh, running okay <coughs> Complete the API route first because whitelisting sees the APIs. Uh, no, these two are related, sir. So whitelist is different. These two are related. No, by whitelisting will show the routes, right? So API routing should be first. Then only uh, mm, whitelisting no. will come, right? Sure. Okay. Hmm. No, I'm just asking you. I related these two, so this I'll take it. Hmm. I'll I'll plan. Okay. So uh, there is a concept of um, API whitelisting. Okay. So uh, you, you know, basically, uh, we had spoken about the RBAC OPA, which is responsible for checking the user roles and uh, you know authenticating whether the user request is valid or not. So on top of that, we have something called as API whitelisting, which checks the request and the roles required against the user session. Okay, whenever there is a request coming to the portal backend, we check any uh, is there any checks on that particular API. And we take the request object session, and the session which have a roles. In the previous step we saw uh, once the user is authenticated, we will be pushing the roles which is coming from the user read API. That will be checked against the roles defined in the configuration. So if any of the role matches, then the API is uh, uh, you know uh, entertained as a successful. Otherwise, it's returned as failure. So here the two sets as an intersection we are doing, not an union set. Any one of the roles should match which is configured against that API. Okay, we we'll look at the configuration now. Okay, so uh, let's say um, we have. Uh, I think. Okay. Okay, let's uh, take this example of this API. Um, okay, there is action contained v3 copy. Okay, this API performs. I know when I click on this uh, copy button of a content, it creates a clones a copy of a content. Right. So now we have defined this API, and we have mentioned that checks needed is role check. Okay, I need to perform a role check on this particular API whenever there is a request. Now, what are the different roles I need to uh, expect from the request? Okay, let's say I am performing this action on this API. I need to possess whether I should be either I should be a org admin, either or a book creator. Any one of the role is uh, required to successfully execute this API. So this is the master configuration file that is whitelist uh, whitelist APIs .js file which has all the api routes all the api routes which the portal backend will uh, you know accepts and the role or the checks whatever they define under uh, roles also is mentioned uh, for this if you see there's uh, uh, too many a uh, lot of roles is uh, defined any this kind of uh, anyone who has uh, either of the role can execute it okay so now how how do we uh, how the system okay takes this uh, you know, incoming request and and performs this API whitelist check. We'll look into the implementation. Okay. Uh, hmm, okay. So before we uh, go into this, there's an uh, top of this. There are a couple of APIs which is called internally that is health checks APIs. Okay. Uh, health checks API is basically uh, uh, you know hits a, a, a couple of services to check whether they are up and performing as uh, you know as expected. If the service is down, uh, you know it, it flags off saying that the <coughs> the health of that particular service is down. Okay, basically the service is down. So those APIs will be excluded. Okay, will be excluded from this check because it's an overhead because service health checks are called. I, I, you know, uh, uh, so frequently uh, in the system, you know, randomly, um, and it, it it is an overhead to do an API whitelist checks every time it is called. 
right? It's an internal call. That's why we are excluding, not a uh, call which is coming from an external, right? And the API is the endpoints which uh, has a .js extension or uh, you know image files or CSS. All these files are excluded. I mean, all these uh, requests are excluded. Okay, when you uh, when you open the browser and when you uh, go to our application and if you just have a look at the network calls with the all filter, not only XHR, all, we will be calling main.js file and minified files and .js and uh, .css, right? Those files and all uh, will be excluded. The, the, this request will be not entertained for the whitelisting checks. And this is purely for an API request. Where are these yeah, I'll, I'll come back. So the, this is purely for that, uh, you know, uh, exclusion patterns. <clears throat> so we spoke about API whitelist configuration. Now, where the definition for that, how how the checks is performed, that you can uh, you can have look at uh, API whitelist.js file. <clears throat> okay. So uh, okay. So these are all the uh, extensions. Uh, I mean, these are all the excluding patterns. Okay. Dot md is readme file. Dot js. Uh, icon files, fonts, SVG, GIF, PNG, .html, anything which is called from the dist folder, okay? Those things are uh, genuinely, it is there in the system, so we just exclude that from the whitelisting checks, okay? Uh, resource bundles, uh, that is a JSON file for the language translation, assets, uh, plugins and editors, okay? If the request is not falling into this category, then it will go for whitelist checks, otherwise we just Assume that we, uh, we are getting a genuine request and we bypass it, okay? So, uh, if you have a look at uh, many helper files or the routes.js file in the portal backend, we might see this is frequently called, is API whitelisted, is allowed, okay? Before we saw that app.use and we were passing a middleware methods, uh, this couple of restrictions or the rules to be executed before you entertain the API. This also is nothing but app.all slash learner slash star. Any API which is coming with the slash learner and the slash, the uh, star is a wildcard, anything which is coming after, if you have this pattern, execute all these checks and then pass the request to the uh, next service, next stop. It might be your, uh, you know, uh, uh, upstreams or it might be an external call, whatever it is, <coughs> right? So this this is commonly uh, you know uh, available like when we have any API defined or API routers uh, uh, you know mentioned we see that whitelisting is allowed. Now the implementation for this you can see it at API whitelist.js file, okay. So is uh, is allowed, right? So is allowed is a method from this file which is exported, okay. What does this does is whenever there's a request, okay. So First check is to whether it is an exclusion pattern is uh, applicable. If it is an exclusion pattern applicable, we just bypass it. If not, we take the request URL, okay? Let's say, uh, uh, assuming that, uh, okay, this is the URL we are getting for, for the debate purpose. Action user v1 search. This is the request that is now currently with us. Now, what does it do? The white click, uh, whitelist checks, it is not uh, falling into any exclusion pattern. So we just entertain that, yes, it is a general request. Now we have to check for the roles. Now it will go. This API list is nothing but the entire uh, uh, the entire um, object. If you see, uh, I mean, um, I can collapse this, okay? Uh, so this is a role uh, uh, enum uh, kind of thing. So if you see API whitelist, this is an entire object which contains around, um, 1700 plus lines. So this contains, what is the URL? What is the check I need to perform? What are the roles for that uh, URL, okay? Uh, so from here, we uh, we take the pattern, uh, that is URL pattern is action v1 search, uh, assuming that we have. So that, uh, yes, uh, the, we have configuration for that. Now what is the checks to be performed? Role check, right? Now, what is the payload for that? We need a book creator and org admin. These are the two roles to be performed. <coughs> this, uh, you know, this piece of uh, module is written, um, you know, so that in case if you have any multiple checks, okay, uh, do we have user uh, hot check? Uh, role check is there and uh, owner check is there. Owner check, yeah. Owner check. <coughs> yeah, 
Yeah. Okay. So yeah, this is very. Uh, this is the AP, which is a culprit for bringing this module uh, into the system. Okay. So content V1, uh, uh, content state read API, basically. Okay. This has two condition. That is, I need to do a role check as well as owner check. So I can't go and read Rajiv ka content state. Okay. I need to be able to read only my content state. Okay. I can't read Rajiv's state. Right. So that is owner check. So now we have a role check. Uh, role is a public, and owner check session user ID. I need to check. Because whenever there's a request, you will have user ID in the request object, and every request in the Node.js backend, the request object will carry a session object. As I mentioned in the previously, every request object will have the session object carrying if the user is logged in. In that request object, we will have a user ID. Because in the third uh, function, we get current user roles. We fetch the roles, we fetch the username, user ID, all those things we are pushing into session object for this purpose, right? We are cross validating against the session roles with the roles which is mentioned here. Sorry, this. Okay. So uh, this uh, API whitelisting, uh, you know, this has this will take the methods again the same logic. We push it to the array, and we execute them using promise. If any of the method reject, uh, if any of the method returns a reject, it means that there is a uh, session is not matching. Uh, I mean the conditions are not met. So we throw four not three, four not three forbidden error, uh, API whitelisting error. If you see in the network, there is a four not three API for API whitelist forbidden error. First thing is to check the whitelist dot API dot JS file. Take the route. Take what is the roles defined for them. I'll take a better example. Okay. Check what is the roles mentioned, and is that user having a proper roles? <coughs> if if we is not having, we have to flag it off. Was you don't have a roles for the specified API operation to be performed, so that's why it is throwing an error. Ideally, this error should not occur unless and until the user object is manually. Modified, manipulated, or touched. Right? Why this is written in a so generic way? Because in an array, okay. Uh, so once we push all those rules in this array, right? We call execute checks, okay? Which passes request. We carry the request for every hop of the method in the Node.js and response object. And the next, the checks to execute is an array. Yeah, checks to execute is an array. This array will contain the role check, owner check, as we see in the configuration. Now, execute checks uh, is nothing but uh, it, it contains uh, the role check is what we see in the configuration that we have here. The definition for that it will take intersection, as I said earlier, role, uh, roles for URL, which is from the configuration file, and the session roles. Hope I'm not confusing. Please, please flag it off. Any any questions with us? Just stop me wherever you find difficult. Yes, sir. So I am facing this issue. I have to provide uh, access for one API for certain. Mike. Uh, yes, sir. So I have to provide access uh, for an role uh, to an API. Okay. So I have made changes in whitelist API. Okay, so it is working with the other role, but not for the that role. So owner is the same. Uh, I have added in API white whitelist. Mm -hmm. So, but it, still, it is uh, I am getting the this whitelist so error. What all uh, checks you have added? Only role checks. Only role checks. Okay. And uh, I have changed the uh, user role from API also. Uh, the roles that you have added? Uh, it's a uh, mm -hmm. collaborator. Okay. Uh. Okay. So if we have seen this configuration, I'll, I'll come back to the questions. If you have seen this configuration, we are nowhere uh, writing the roles in the string. It's an enum. Okay. If I check this enum, this is the role 
and the this is the contract between the portal backend and this uh, uh, learns uh, users uh, user or user roles which is in the core backend so if i assign a role to the user okay saying this is not a valid role because it is a contract and a convention between the backend the core backend and the portal backend that was all the roles should carry a capital case and the underscore yeah. separated by underscore i have used the uh, role that is mentioned in database okay so i have used that one so is that role onboarded in the backend um, backend that i haven't checked i just made this check uh, change so i want to confirm is there any other places we have to make changes okay. if it is onboard in the backend it 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 will understand that language so if your user role matches with the role that you have added the api whitelisting will work for that role okay if the user role is not onboarded in your session it will not have that particular role at all so this comes to live uh, okay sorry uh, this this comes to live and this solely depends on the third step which we saw in the login process that is get user detail uh, get user details or get user roles roles that api returns from the backend the roles what we get the backend we are putting into a session that we are doing a cross check against it that returns with a smaller case or you know any mismatch in the you know comparison because we do a triple check not a double check okay strict check uh you know if it doesn't matches then obviously the exception is thrown so that role in the data with that he saw must also be present here right obviously right. that i have added but uh, it will go in a token right so, so it is it is like this huh. if you have added in the backend and not added in the portal backend you will have an exception if you have added in the portal backend and you have not added in the core backend a core Again, backend exception. means uh, where this api will call sorry learn learn, 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 learn api okay user roles will be given by the learner itself learn itself okay so uh, when you created uh, sorry when you logged in what will happen is okay if you remember a session uh, previous session before the hmm. session when you do a login what you do is you uh, give a username give a password he clock with authenticate you A session is created before that only. Once the key clock authenticates you, what we will do is we will take the JWT token from the JWT token. We will take the user ID from there, and we will do a user search call. When a user search happens, the whole user search will be brought back. In that, each organ uh, user search, what does it do? Is user uh, object will be there. In the user object, there is a. Uh, ऑनबोर्डिंग uh, रोल Yeah. the role in the learn backend backend okay so it is configuration or the, uh, code changes like you need to check whether that no okay. the roles are not accomplished we don't know that because pretty much uh, the roles yeah. when you need to insert it insert that very you have to write the logic for that okay okay on boarding a new role is kind of a different good. workflow there is workflow okay so moving apart i mean moving moving aside like so let's say we have a request how does the method behave is we have the session roles as a uh, for me logged in i have a role called a and the rules defined for this in the configuration let's take any api and we have a role called b b and b comma c now when i do an intersection there is a zero match so it is an unauthorized simple right so that's why we in the code we might have seen uh, this intersection that is a hard if 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 for example if i say uh, i have a role called c from the session assuming a different request and so intersection is uh, 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 the length of array is 1 so it's a valid similar way so uh, if there is an owner check so we are uh, you know taking 
Ah, the session dot user ID. That's what we had seen, right? So it takes a session user ID from request request object. We are uh, uh, referring the session dot user ID, which we pushed in the third API, and the request uh, uh, object ID. I mean, the incoming request object payload ID. That is the post request. In the request will have a user ID. If that matches. We we say them okay yeah it is a genuine request resolve otherwise we say that re uh, reject with a proper message mismatch in user ID verification session ID does not match with the request body user ID. This piece of module has an efficient logs. Okay, when we look at the logs in the uh, you know elastic and uh, the log stash, kibana right? Gray log. Gray log. Gray log. Okay, gray log. It clearly says a message. For this particular request, this is the session roles, and this uh, this is the roles configured that, for that API, and it does not match. So, looking at the logs, we can identify okay, use session roles is A and C, and the user is uh, having a B and C and D. So, it, D is not matching. So, obviously, we are uh, throwing an exception. For this, uh, the point of uh, you know uh, debug is logs. Logs is the one which can answer for this. That is the debugging, right? So uh, this uh, you know, this is the code walkthrough. Why this is written in an efficient way? Tomorrow, if you want to have a, a let's say org check, okay, um, you know, particular this course, uh, this kind of API should be enabled for this particular org. Yes, you can write a logic. You just mention the rules there, and you write a definition for that here. It will automatically pick up. Any any questions here? Whitelisting APIs. Can I move? Yeah. So that that is all about the uh, whitelist and role checks, and uh, we'll look at API routes. Okay. Uh, so uh, we in the configuration, if you see. The convention starts from content slash content, and some of them we saw the action as we knew I was mentioning actions will be called from the workspace, right? And uh, we have we can see learner routes, right? Okay, learner routes, and um, there's lot. So there is a, a collection editor, content editor, app, v1 tenant info, right? Ha, huh, that I'll that I'll come back. Okay. So this these are the conventions which will uh, you know um, help us to uh, look into where these routes are defined. Okay. Slash content, yeah, it is a content routes dot js file. Slash learner, learner routes dot js file. We can directly jump into. Uh, you know learner routes or if you see uh, content routes okay all the api is you know uh, see if you uh, slash content slash star this is the first block which will be executed when we call a content slash apis right and we have a learner routes learner slash uh, star this gets executed first so this is the convention uh, when we have to ba trace back like this api where i find the implementation what is the api slug Slug, don't confuse with the slug. What is the API uh, starts with? Okay, slash learner or slash content or slash collection editor. Okay, slash API does not come to a portal backend. Just please make a note. Slash API does not have anything to do with the portal backend. It will be directly calling the Kong. Right? No, no coming into our system and going to that. It's directly Kong call. Okay. So. Uh, we have seen the API routes, how it is defined, and uh, how we are doing it, right? Any questions on that? So uh, all the APIs we are just, uh, uh, you know, uh, doing a proxy. Uh, so what? Do you, why, why are we doing a proxy here? Because end user calls, let's say slash learner or v1 content or something slash learner, right? The actual service URL is not known to the end user. It is only uh, uh, you know, available at the portal backend environment variable helper file. Okay, learner uh, learner service will be learn, uh, running on the pod called HTTP colon learner uh, colon nine thousand port. 
it's, it's a pod, right? So you can configure which port to be exposed internally in the, in the Kubernetes, right? If it is like running on 9494, so I will redirect, I will redirect the slash learner request to learner colon 9494. I'll proxy it. So the next hop would be to the respective services. How do we how do we come to a conclusion or how do we conclude that this route has to go to learner that is slash learner everything comes to a slash learner routes.js file we decorate it here and if you see in the proxy it is a learner url now what is this learner url it is environment variable dot uh, learner dot url if we go i think it will not have actual values right no i, I think uh, maybe sample values will be there yeah so sunbird learner player url okay so nothing but i think a pod uh, k8 ka pod service name colon and uh, what is the port uh, port is exposed there are some API yeah No, if it is calling without a learner, then it should be pointing to other service. Uh, you know, a staled API cannot be in the, the system. It will be, will be tagged with one of the services. So, what will be the uh, URL that you are talking about? It is slash API uh, slash read, is it? Yes. Uh, let me check. Okay. So, because if you check it, it will be better. There are, uh, see, there are routes like okay. content route, content.js. Uh, Learner routes, there is uh, form config. Form config, which is directly API slash uh, form uh, form data, and uh, there is uh, no no. The, the only thing, if you understand this one, slash API, okay. Any any API call which is going with slash API, directly okay. It will go to directly to the Kong. No it's no. Not here here it does not come. Uh, this, don't check. They, they'll confuse with the learner river. Learner will not be. This is a fallback condition. This is a fallback. No, actually, if they it's configure Diksha, Diksha huh. also configured huh. with the actual domain slash this thing as environment variable, okay, then always it will go that endpoint only. As I told you in uh, previous calls also, portal is always makes a portal backend, proxy calls always. From the proxy only, proxy nothing but API service, portal backend API service. From here, it will go to upstreams. There are two ways of doing it. Upstream is this is what? It will go to Kong. From the Kong, it will read it to the respective uh, microservice. The other option is, instead of going to Kong, if they configure actual microservice ka endpoint, where it's been hosted, what is that IP? If they are given that as a configuration, it will not go to Kong. Directly, it will go to the microservice directly, the call. In that case, the endpoints, what you are saying it right, the slash API slash when they call, Kong to directly endpoint, from portal to directly to endpoint, there are two ways. You have to understand what is the prefix available in the call. Is it going to slash API or is it going to portal backend? Prefix is the entry prefix. point for us to look up. Check yeah. this one. In, a, in all the APIs, what do you g g do it? Because when you go to proxy, this won't be there. If it is there, it will not come to portal backend at all. It will go to directly Kong. If this is not there, it will come to portal backend. For the portal backend, it will redirect to either Kong or directly a, uh, API service based on the what has been configured. Again, clear? Yes. Huh? Okay. So you have to understand only this. This is a, even for mobile also. The key thing is slash API endpoint. What is what are you calling it? Mobile directly always calls to slash API. It will not go on to portal backend at all. The calls, except couple of calls. Okay, anyhow that we will cover in the mobile session. So, uh, uh, any questions with that? So, we have seen the sessions routes, API routes, uh, how how we um, uh, you know um, navigate and uh, go to the de definition of the route when is there is an issue, and auth checks, whitelist and role checks, onboarding new API. I'll take it up now, right? So, uh, is there any use cases that you guys tried? To onboard the APIs, have you ever tried onboarding any new API? Is there any use cases in Diksha? No. Ideally, it won't be. 
Yeah, that's all. In the Kong, it's okay. Okay. But in the portal backend, do you guys have any issues? Because of Kong, it is the whoever is writing that service. That's why knowledge, if you have added a new API in the knowledge, it is knowledge team's responsibility to put it in the Kong. So it is not uh, portal ED's responsibility to understand it or uh, use it. If they expose it, they will use it. If it is useful for us. Okay. They so can expose 100 different APIs. Uh, okay. We're not saying that all 100 will be used by us, right? Pretty much most of the time, okay, mm -hmm. Diksha will not have any new APIs mm -hmm. because you, Diksha doesn't have any new services owning by itself. Mm -hmm. Diksha as an adapter is adopting existing services what Sunbird Ed is giving. Okay, because if Diksha, you would take a 6.0 of Sunbird Ed, all the APIs being onboarded already as part of 6.0 of Sunbird Ed. Diksha is just consuming those APIs because not consuming means we have already written the code to consume it also. Okay, you guys just need to validate those data, whatever the data you want getting from that API is right or not. That's how the adopters will be looking at. If you have your own service, then only the changes required on the portal backend and as you explained, on board Kong side also, what is a new endpoint and then how to redirect it and all, that's what required. So uh, by I have just uh, one. I think it's a confusion. So like uh, uh, you told that in the API whitelist thing, the checks are done for the uh, role that comes from the read API, the read role, mm. and which, which is defined here. Checked against the session roles. Yeah, yeah. Checked against the session roles. So if that passes, right? If that check passes, and that building block API is not defined in Kong. Okay. It would throw in some exception. Obviously. So error message would be you cannot consume this service. No, no, no APIs have been no formed. APIs is available in this route. No API available in the route. Okay. So uh, the, uh, that I, uh, your answer will be in the next onboarding API. In that, I'll cover this. Point. Okay. Yeah. So uh, that API was in which route? Which VDN. It was framework B1 read. So sometimes it's called with framework and sometimes without framework. What is it? Is it slash API slash framework? Uh, or just a, what is it? Yes, slash framework v1 read. Slash API slash slash uh -huh. API slash. Uh -huh. See, that's what I'm saying. You have to refer slash API is present in the URL, not first. Understand slash that? API will slash API go to Kong. Kong. Is a Kong is responsible. If you are making a request to Kong, Kong will make sure which other service it has to make a call. So debugging, just copy that URL, flag it to the DevOps, this API is failing. It's, it's un, not onboarded. There are a lot many factors. Yeah. It might not be onboarded. There, uh, there might be a rate limiting threshold. Um, there might be something, uh, you know, they might have uh, deflagged it. A lot of factors are there. They will be able to help on that. Slash API <laughs> does not come to our portal backend. Upstream URL may be configured. You are making a right call. But upstream URL, what is it configured in the con, we will have to be wrong. They may be wrong, yeah. Okay. 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 So uh, onboarding uh, new API, okay? Onboarding new API, like uh, if I want to introduce new API in the portal backend, right? So uh, there are a lot of many factors are involved in this. So if you introduce an API, the front end, now, now I'm using the word front end because our portal will communicate to the portal backend. The API is correct. So what next? So if you are passing that request hop to the next service, it might be a learner or content or whatever it is, if the API definition is not exposed from that service, your onboarding of new API is not complete. Useless, uh, actually. So it is not complete. It might be a scenario where you have to do some logic. There are a couple of APIs. For example, v1 slash tenant slash info. Okay. I think uh, uh, one of my friend was asking question yesterday, how do I configure the tenant info, right? So yeah, so that, that API is responsible to generate the tenant config because those logic is happening over in the portal backend itself. That API is not defined anywhere in the other service or in the Kong layer or in the admin util or any knowledge, material, any middleware. It is within our portal backend such that whenever the API is uh, you know encountered, we do the operation and send back the response. We're not proxying it. Okay? Yeah. 
consider Correct. consider this information what i is giving just for your information to know it ideally you guys will not go and do a change but because issues, now issues you might get issue, uh, issues you have to see okay but you will not go and do a code change for sure most of the cases is just a configuration problems most of the cases okay because something new we want to onboard new api who is exposing that api first of all who is the service is it coming other than sunbird head because all the apis we already onboarded as part of sunbird head okay then what is so, the new api who is exposed uh, ideally in the realistic world when you are onboarding an api matlab we will while ride in the back end we'll back do end, operations someone. and we'll send but in case of this such a huge system it is in the reverse approach first the service the dependent service let's say in the learner they have to write validate then expose that api devops should entertain that api and acknowledge and then they have to onboard it to a kong saying this api requires this roles now once that is done and the service is up then we have to introduce in the portal backend why because if that user logs in the kong should return the updated roles uh, to that particular api right so that 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 dependency that binding is required no. so okay. it's a reverse approach again portal backend is some new feature you are building in the portal ui again exactly right? exactly you had some new requirement where you are building a new change in the portal ui that is called a new endpoint which is again yeah, some onboarding new is exposed new new microservice other than sunbird head building block thing if you dixia is having its own microservice okay assume that you build your own microservice because some use cases then you hosted that service as part of dixia then that api is being onboarded into kong or dixia mm -hmm. Now, if, if you want to talk that API from portal UI, you have to show somewhere in the portal UI that capability, right? Then only you will onboard that portal code change in the portal UI, code change in the backend system. Okay, what are the new are and then again sequence of steps and yeah. dependent. You can't. It's a waterfall methodology. I could say, once you have done, you expose the API and onboard it to Kong. that is validated that service are deployed then only you can uh, be, uh, you Today, do that there is nothing like as such okay there no diksha specific microservices i know this yeah. is okay and just for uh, information just to know information to that if you want to write a new api yeah how to write okay just yeah, for so information just keep in mind just to yeah. understand so api like we have public api protected and private yes so uh, ndr perspective you might be knowing that uh, no uh, sandbox ियली this will be exposed or uh, uh, how um, uh, this can be used by the external world no no okay uh, okay i will, i will try to no, uh, part of devops or no? yeah, it is part of devops no no okay public apis and all uh, exposing is uh, part of devops i think when uh, santosh gandam takes the session you can ask the no uh, uh, okay i know from where you, no uh, Okay, I'll try to answer your question. I know from where you are coming coming from. Diksha is exposing a new Swagger documentation. All the APIs that Diksha is want to expose other adopters, not adopters, some partners want to use it. Diksha specific APIs. Okay, so it's the same as Ed. There's no nothing different. Ed is also expose some APIs. The same APIs Diksha is exposing it for the partners. But way of documenting instead of putting it on Ed. Diksha is putting its own documentation as a Swagger documentation now creating by Diksha now that is exposed as a public APIs. Any partners who want to talk to Diksha contents to get educational contents. Diksha is nothing but education contents. If you want to talk, use this list of public APIs. But that will not come to portal backend at all. As I told you, what is the route? API Kong manager, API manager, and API manager to backend service. That's it. Public APIs directly. they no user login sessions nothing no portal they are not going to use our portal right they want to build a new application altogether but they want to use a diksha specific contents in that application 
Okay. So, that should go via public APIs, public API is nothing but a Kong and Kong to the microservices. So, the, the additional to layer micro OPA. Microservices, respect to so microservices. So, all those APIs uh, are already in Kong, with exposed. Yeah, it's already there in the Kong. Kong. Okay. You are just putting documentation so the others can understand now. Understood. That's it, nothing else. Mm -hmm. Okay. Today, only Diksha team knows what is the Kong specific uh, so APIs the, being there. So, the uh, approach is it should be in Kong, which can be uh, used by the external world. Hmm. That's the only thing Diksha is driving now, like giving some samples, how to use that API, and, and those, for what purpose. If you, are, if you want to expose any additional public APIs, you will not be mentioning any rules required for that in the Kong. The OPA layer will be bypassed. Right? RBAC will be bypassed, basically. I, I think OPA was covered uh, <laughs> in the previous sessions. Yeah, yeah, whatever. So, don't go to OPA. Okay, these are public APIs that's they want to onboard, nothing else. That's all. Like, the, the, those are the services which are responsible for checking the RBAC, role-based access control. Mm -hmm. So that will be bypassed. That you can, uh, DevOps can DevOps team has already out. done that, okay? It's not like something new, okay, which is already done. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because that's how we, everybody is using that public APIs today. Without portal also, they can make a direct API calls through Postman. Something what you can see today. Some of the APIs which so is calling by is, portal. Yeah, we can use your, uh, Postman. Postman directly without portal, because there is no, no session required and everything. Mm -hmm. You can directly make a Kong API call to access it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, any uh, questions regarding onboarding new APIs into the system? Uh, one more. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, here is one common API required. Okay. Okay. So, uh, first thing is that. A read of what? Read any form or anything. Okay. Uh, okay. Is, uh, okay. So, uh, sometime it's written the uh, data on the basis of request parameter, like hmm. X and all these. So, what are these uh, so things? Yeah. Home services, tomorrow we have a okay. I'll explain all those things there. So, okay. but what are your questions? He's asking what are the parameters which What are, are the parameters we are sending and based uh, that we are returning some results? That See, tomorrow form service will have I a request pattern. We already saw that we covered that thing yesterday. Hmm. But we can still explain that part if uh, time permits. Uh, form service, uh, there are uh, some APIs like uh, form read, form create, form update, and uh, list all. Okay, these are the APIs that are available. For a form read, you need to. Okay. Uh, for a form read, you need to send it the three par three parameters. One is uh, type. Okay. Uh, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, I forgot that. Otherwise, uh, nobody understands ki I am talking. talking. Okay, yeah. So, uh, there are three parameters that you need to send. Uh, three basic parameters. There can be a um, lot more. Okay. The, the lot more, we can explain it tomorrow. Okay. So, first thing is type. Second thing is subtype. Third thing is action. Okay. All these three are very important. That will make sure ki, okay, let's assume yesterday we saw a menu bar ka form read. So, what are the type? Type was, uh, I think, content and uh, subtype was menu bar and global. These were the three parameters which were sent to get the whole menu bar items. Okay. Similar to that, I think, um, uh, Sharath had uh, yesterday showed one more, which is user onboard exception. If you remember in the table that he had, he had shown that there is a three part type is user, uh, subtype is onboarding, and uh, the action is exception. So, these particular, uh, what that particular form does is it will say uh, if you see Diksha, right? When you open Diksha, uh, better I will explain them. Uh, when you go to Diksha or when you go to Sunbird, the onboarding. You will see what is the type of user, what is your, uh, uh, whether your type is teacher and all those things and then what is your preferences and the third part is what is your location. Those pop-ups, let's assume you do a dial code search. Do you need those pop-ups? You don't need it. You can accept Chennai. When you use sign up, do you need that? No, you don't need that. You can do an exception for that. For that we have written the form API. Okay. So like that, there are many other uh, forms. Uh, tomorrow when I uh, cover the form uh, services, we can have a look on that. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Hope I have answered your question.
I think form yeah, service think, uh, will have an answer for so that tomorrow. Actually, form means that's what uh, what was pop up, which is coming. Mm. No, 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 that's not just a form. Uh, okay. Is, is tomorrow will cover. That's what yeah, I'm saying. Okay. okay, all the forms tomorrow will cover more. Mm. Okay. The whole form where, 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 where we are taking it as a one session. So, so form yeah, in terminology, in in our application, when we say check the form, it's a JSON form configuration JSON object. Form is nothing but the fields which we have in the UI where like, uh, you know, uh, enter the name or enter the, select the district or, you know, the pop-ups forms. We, no, that, that's a form, that's a UI form. But when we talk generally form, check the form or uh, you uh, upload the form config, form, it's nothing but a form configuration, it's a JSON, which will be covered by Rajiv by, to, you know, tomorrow morning session. Well, to ask. Okay, sure, no problem. Anyways, we'll take. Yeah. So, uh, so any that we are good with the onboarding new APIs, right? So we know the waterfall method, like where, which services we need to expose and how we onboard it. Our the portal backend will be the last person who will acknowledge that request and take the uh, new API and implement it. We will not be the first person. If we are the first person, you will be the first res error message response we will get, right? So that is one thing. So environment variable uh, onboarding new variable. So we have uh, spoken much about, but anyways, I'll I'll retouch on this. So whenever we, uh, uh, you know, uh, onboard new variable uh, into the environment, let's say I, I need to have, uh, uh, you know, application name uh, differently and it should be dynamic, okay. Let's say for an example, because I, in the browser, I need to uh, show the uh, page title uh, in the tab. I need to have it dynamically coming from an environment. So I'll declare, I'll read the colon and I'll declare uh, the env dot, this thing. Our portal, Okay, portal backend will be referring the LHS part. That is where it will get uh, pumped into the process.env, which is a node ka process runtime uh, variable engine. The RHS part is defined in the Sunbird DevOps, which will be injected during your build process. And if you want to run it locally, you can have a fallback condition and you can hard code it whatever the value you want. Right? So that is uh, pretty much. And one uh, thing I didn't need to touch with this is, so give me a minute. Yeah, okay. So I know uh, there's a lot, but I'll still minimize. Just I wanted to show the list. There is in the client routes .js file. Okay, this is. Um, something which is required, uh, you know, to know, make a note because um, back and forth we'll be looking at the information in the browser. The client routes.js file has this something called locals and some dot, uh, some name and that env value, right? I'll zoom in, okay? So let's take a... And I was searching for that. I could not find it. Did you find? Okay, yeah. So locals dot build number. Okay, right. Now, what is locals? Is uh, you know, it's an EJS template. Uh, so once there is a build happening, we will, you know, update the placeholders with that value and we'll put it in an index dot html, which is the entry point for the web, right? Now, the same value. How would I see in the Browser. So when I open a browser, when I go with the elements, extend the uh, uh, yeah body, and you see there is lot of input uh, tags which is hidden. Okay, because this information need not to be painted on the browser, the actual web page for the end user, but we need it as an additional information. All these fields are hidden. And uh, if you see the build number, yeah, build number and the value is, currently it is running on 5.1.0 branch and this is the commit ID. So like this, we have uh, so many values getting injected here, okay. So in turn, uh, okay, I'll show you one example. Uh, I think, see, they have uh, injected a cloud provider that is value is equal to OCI. I am not sure uh, the usage of it. Okay. Uh, okay. I'll take this P1 recapture enabled or not. Okay. I'll take this value. So, 
I'll show how we read this value in our front end. Okay. Uh, okay. So there's a there's, there's a one component. Okay, this is spec file. I don't need spec file. Okay. There's a component, uh, an Angular component that is sign up email password dot component. If I have enabled reCAPTCHA for P1 categorized uh, requests, okay, that P1 is that something, uh, you know, categorized P1, P2, P3, and the, we have uh, different uh, CAPTCHA values for that, okay, um, you know, uh, P1 will be frequently like, for example, uh, user registration, uh, they, we need to check I am a human being, that's a reCAPTCHA. So that is something many users will be touching. So we need to have a, a, a rate limiting higher reCAPTCHA or, uh, you know, uh, a, a, big, a bigger version of it. So that's categorized P1 and P2 and P3 following uh, wherever it is required, right? So if that CAPTCHA is enabled, then only I need to show the CAPTCHA in the front end. Let's say uh, there was some scenario where uh, due to huge traffic, we had a hit like a, a CAPTCHA is not loading. We had a broken image in place of uh, CAPTCHA place. That's because there was a rate limiting uh, overshoot and uh, uh, we had, you know, users were not able to uh, move further because it's a, without the CAPTCHA is validated, the further actions are blocked, right? Let's say we in a registration page, we have a CAPTCHA and it's not loading. Obviously, the sign up button or the registration button will be disabled. So you can't move further. So that what we had uh, thought of is like, we will introduce an environment variable, which is configure a label again. So we knew, we no need to rebuild the code and read, uh, you know, uh, rebuild the entire code, okay? So now just I disable the flag, disable the flag in the backend, redeploy, automatically it works. The CAPTCHA is bypassed. So these are the, uh, some of the variables which we inject, uh, you know, to play around uh, configuration at the front end level. So, uh, I mean, there's a lot more, uh, you know, what is the, is the bot configured or chatbot you endpoint, okay? editor's URL. Uh, editor's URL. Okay, so you can take this uh, value. ID is the value. Okay, that locals dot what we saw in the code. That that's the uh, LHS part of this. You can take this and search the code, and you can see wherever the usage of that and uh, you know behavior of that va va variable. Yeah. yeah so that this require redeployment of the pipeline. Not re. Uh, no, no. There's no pipeline. Redeploy the pod. So you, there will not be uh, yeah, pods. pods. Only we ed does not <laughs> we don't uh, no we don't we don't know what is pipeline <laughs> as a ed we don't know what is pipeline <laughs> okay we generate telemetry that's all where does it go even we pump we the telemetry data. data we are we don't know what is pipeline <laughs> we don't care about it okay i just on a fun note but there's no uh, pipeline involved in this I redeploy the pod so if you redeploy it there's a mechanism in the case that, uh, you know, once the other new pod comes up, the other pod still stays alive. So it is new one, uh, new one is running, then the old pod get destroyed. I mean, terminated, basically. Yeah, you so, do we have, can we just scroll up? We have uh, certain items also, like, uh, like whether, this, whether we want, uh, one second, uh, little bit, huh? whether we want to use a CDN or whether we want uh, in, uh, in your disk itself, like disk will be stored in your uh, server, right? Whether we want to honor it from the disk itself or it has been put it into CDN, those things can be uh, used from one more input called as is CDN working or not? If the CDN is working, where is the CDN URL is available? If you see that, uh, preview CDN URL, yeah, it will get, go from there, okay? And all these things are en 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 environmental variables which is required from the front end. There is nothing key specific. There is no keys which is exposed as an environmental variable. Okay? And once you log in, right, uh, you will see user ID is getting appended here. Okay? This is, uh, there is an if condition for the login. We pump additional uh, variables into this. Okay, so if the user is logged in, right, request.include user details, we 
append the uh, locals variables with the user id and the user id value so if you have logged in uh, maybe i i can show it on staging if required staging is up staging is up So see, user ID gets appended here if the user is logged in. This you will not find for the no anonymous users. Uh, and SID is the session ID. Right? And uh, please uh, be careful when we are onboarding new local variables, you not inject any private values. The moment you do it, it gets exposed. Yeah. You have to do a key rotation. Right? Any questions with this? Good. Okay. So, presenting. Uh, so, uh, I think we know. Uh, I'll re recap for the entire day. So, uh, okay. The topics covered for the two, day two. Okay. What we have covered first is client services. We have talked about npm usage and extending the npm. Client Cloud Services SDK, we have seen NPM, usage and extending the NPM. In case of, uh, if you have an IBM uh, coming as a service, how do we onboard the base storage service? And a demo project inside the repo, okay? How do we configure that env.js env file and run it locally and to connect the buckets, right? And common consumption components, NPM, usage and extending this, how to debug, how do we uh, run locally and link the package for testing the changes without uh, you know publishing the package. Uh, so yarn link and the npm link uh, which Bharat had uh, demonstrated so that we see the live changes. This is on the um, first session and um, by Rajiv we had seen other building blocks workspace, uh, content lifecycle create, review and publish, uh, how does the you know lifecycle goes through for each phase and in the workspace uh, where do where do we see uh, the contents created and up for review or up for publish, right? Uh, the published contents. So we see that uh, under each sections. That was uh, you know walkthrough, code walkthrough of workspace, how editors are uh, you know played, and how the players are loaded, and how we are uh, onboarding. Uh, sorry, how we are um, uh, switching the players based on configuration in a single component, right? We had seen the four players in one component and based on condition, we are just uh, loading the players, not all the players. And um, yeah, editors and players. And portal backend, uh, we saw about the session, guest login and the user, uh, uh, actual user login. API routes, so auth checks, whitelist and role checks, onboarding new APIs and environment variables and onboarding new environment variables. Okay, as per the plan, uh, I think uh, in the Excel sheet for the agenda today, uh, I think it's almost, uh, we have met with the uh, with things and the uh, one uh, dashlets uh, will be moved to tomorrow morning due to the time constraints. Uh, I think uh, tomorrow agenda will be uh, dashlets, form service and desktop app. Right? Yeah. So do we have any questions? Yeah. Yeah. Do we have any questions? Open to questions. Uh, it might be from any of the topics. Not only it's not, not uh, with the last session, you can have uh, questions uh, open to day two agenda. Okay, uh, just to cover day one, day two. Yeah. The plan was to complete the complete portal, including front end, back end, okay, and the li libraries. If you see the architecture diagram, the first one is a uh, client apps, what we thought. Client apps, the portal UI, and then front end libraries, and the portal API service. This one chain is completed today. Tomorrow we are going to cover the the form service because client portal UI pretty much is everything is configurable, right? Okay, how it's been configurable using form services. That's why we took explicitly the topic to cover tomorrow. More about form service. Okay. Once after that, uh, the desktop app is again client uh, apps, right? What we call okay, and then the co-create portal. Okay, co-create portal is exactly similar to what a structure you learned today, but only specific to co-create portal, what are the new modules available there? That's we'll touch up on the co-create portal. 
that's it to tomorrow and after tomorrow yeah, plan yeah. to cover it cover it any questions related to portal okay let's open for discussion now okay let's go to portal okay don't uh, go to uh, forms uh, and all one uh, thing is below it is uh, dashlets, dashlets reports okay. tomorrow morning dashlets pretty much it's covered in the data track just now today afternoon okay how the dashlets can be called not a dashlets hake reports what reports. we call uh, hake reports or admin reports what we call how those reports can be configured and all covered in the data track i think they are also covering the portal ui point of view how the portal ui making a request for those apis and then how the portal is showing that data i think the topic is covered okay that topic is covered there but you guys know how to be integrated that's all pretty much here okay, okay. any how tomorrow we will cover that also a couple of dashboards okay admin dashboards as well as a uh, course uh, course, uh, course dashboards uh, as well some other course dashboards okay we'll cover that thing tomorrow any questions on this portal uh actually like uh, uh that that one bug that uh, simran also raised uh that icon thing that we have to change the size on the content player so actually uh, uh, there is a sunbird content player repo right so we i did set it up on local there was a piece of css that was required to be added to change that dimension of that uh, menu icon so for mobile we were able to do because that because that content pair folder exists in the mobile app as a folder we were able to change and see it but in this <coughs> yeah it's it's in an iframe that you already told but that iframe also is loading from that content yes. player which is exposed in the uh, cdn right right yeah. so we did change that uh, uh, added that css there but uh, after deploying that uh, on the kubernetes it still doesn't reflect it may not because you have to update the uh, css in the uh, cloud cloud right. application npm right so it is in the cloud the player uh, the is a preview player. file we will try जेनरिक विच लोड इन दिन फाइल I added that CSS there, and it worked on the standalone setup that I did. But when it deployed as a repo on the Kubernetes, after so that. Which repo you deployed? That's what I'm saying. Which repo you deployed? Okay. Where is the player? Is the player being deployed? Our portal being deployed. What is it? That uh, Sunbird content player is being deployed. Sunbird content player is deployed. From which branch? Of your local port? How is being deployed? So there is a branch. We, we whatever was already deployed previously, we took a branch from that only. Okay. Yeah, and uh, you updated it and you deployed it from that particular branch. Means it's your branch. Yeah, on on our dev environments. Yeah. Okay. After deploying, are you able to see your changes? Did you made a package version change or something to see? Is the player deployed or published? No. There's a V1 player. V1 player. Okay. Okay. You have the two O and redeploy. Don't try to combine. Yeah, we did. We did. Try to see. Uh, breaking the application and see how can I test that change or a change I had done, whether it's reflect coming or not first of all. Reflecting is a different thing in the portal. Whether whatever build is happened, a deployment is happened, is a very right deployment. How do you verify the deployment is happened successfully, and you are able to see your change in the deployed place? Mm -hmm. The integration is secondary, right? Because that deploy is coming to portal, that is secondary. First of all, it deployed to block. Right. Okay. Go to the block part and see your changes are reflecting. Or last week, always we say build number. 
successful and uh, the devops might say that it's we are we have done right but there is an underlying next step that is artifacts upload if that fails your build is not completed okay mm -hmm. so there are steps like build yeah. and deploy yeah see the part and verify that file whatever change you made see system change see the block part is a file do you have your change yes yes okay okay we can discuss that and uh, for the feedback please uh, scan yeah. the qr code and you can understand yeah. <coughs> so we are creating uh, when we are creating build yeah so we are changing index.html to uh, index.ejs mm -hmm. index.ejs to index.html okay reverse okay this is index.ejs defined okay so uh -huh. so that 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 will uh, uh, that will have a placeholder and there is a, um, a plugin which converts that ejs and we pass this locals.variables what we have done right we pass it as in uh, function params that will convert that Come into on. a html page the transformation happens at that point of time okay okay yeah, what's the question no yeah. no yeah. go ahead no uh, i think that uh, you are frontend and backend are uh, tightly coupled because some very well uh, used uh, from backend <laughs> So uh, my question is why this is tightly coupled back end and because now today uh, <coughs> some of the variables required for the front end okay assume that if you are build a separate application <coughs> that's need to configure to that application separately anyhow hmm. correct and that uh, that requires a so some other configuration file which is again public file so you have to make that changes and use it if you use that way is not using that because we already having a one backend application which is having already exposed all the environment variables why do you want one more file again separately for the front end uh, applications expose the same thing to to be give a better picture on that let's think about the ed as a separate assume that it is we are having a separate front end angular is running and we need a back end now there is two different process running so when when you talk about process in the terms of deployment you need to ensure that the process does not comes down okay we need an angular which is to be running and we need to a node which is to be running and the nginx is responsible to do the reverse proxying to your front end app and front end app should reverse proxy your request to the node app so this is a way long run so we since we have a node js and it is capable of serving the html files what we do is we generate a build out of the angular front end we dump the dist folder and we tell the node was you serve this index html that's enough for us uh Uh, yes maybe but i thought it is uh, majorly for security no, that no, i no. think See, security yeah. is already there with the uh, node application yeah, no so, uh, you have not exposed anything to your front end right right your api calls are coming to your back end then only you are adding the bare tokens as well as the user tokens and you are pushing it out right you can right. independent uh, break it into two parts but the problem is if you break it into two parts tokens. you will have two parts yeah. you have to maintain two parts always and these two parts should communicate with each other through a com okay. they cannot communicate directly day to dilla but we have kept it in one single application uh just a minute the feedback form will check okay 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 thank you thank you thank you thank you Any other questions? Ah, so the, since we spoke about the APIs today, tomorrow when we talk about forms, you will have like okay, this forms will not go to portal backend, so it will be communicated to the Kong directly. That's the uh, advantage that we spoke. This we covered it. We wanted to cover it today. Tomorrow we will talk about form service and uh, you know dashlets. 
reports. So there, there, there involves a different service altogether. Uh, I think Vinua is checking like we have any new QR code for day two. It is giving us day one already submitted. Uh, okay, so like I opened a content type resource, which resource, content type resource, okay. And uh, like in that iframe, there is an SRC tag, which has content preview, preview HTML, and build number is written there. That should be the build number, like deployed on Jenkins.